gaming bets. Online betting for every eSports fan. Dota 2 and Hearthstone, CSGO and Overwatch, StarCraft 2, the choice is yours. Express bets for multiple matches or live bets on the game you are watching right now. Know your way around Dota 2? Make a prediction for picks and bets. Playing CSGO? Guess the number of rounds in a certain match. Daily quests for all participants and all the best choice of payment systems. More than 600,000 users have already made their bets on the spectacular matches since 2011. EGB.com. You know for sure who's going to win. And welcome back. Game number two between Vega Squadron and Team Empire after Vega Squadron laid the smackdown on Empire pretty damn hard. I'm not going to be solo casting this time around, fortunately. I have Rhyme joining me. Rhyme, in between the break, you gave a pretty succinct uh, breakdown of that game one. Would you, uh, would you uh, give it to the audience as well? Oh, I can give it a go. Basically, from what I saw, it seemed like... Vega had a decent laning phase, and then the only really thing to stop them was the Slark, who had decent farm, and then the Slark died, and then Slark had okay farm, and then Slark needed to kill the Morphling, who had very good farm, and then he'd failed to do so. The Morphling had very, very good farm, and the Rax died. So, it didn't really work out for him. So, I just like watching Vega. They just have, like, this really hard, like, not full protect one, but, like, kind of one protect four kind of thing going on. Mm. Vega Squadron, we'll see if they go for a similar sort of strategy going into game number two here. We're going to start with an OD on the night combination for Team Empire. Vega Squadron respond with a Nyx Assassin and Oracle. Very, very rarely do we see OD left into the pool, and it's also going to be coupled with an on the night. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Rhyme? Um, I think if you want to play OD as a first pick, you kind of do need like some kind of hero to protect it. Otherwise, playing OD against enough counters without any kind of like Omni or Oracle with him is pretty insane. Um, because Nyx basically just limits the amount of time for the OD to stay in the fight. Mm -hmm. So getting this Omni basically means like it guarantees that if your OD has a good time and your Omni doesn't feed too much, then you'll at least get some level of map control just by walking around with three or four heroes with like this repelled OD. Yeah, it does seem. Um... I mean, I'll be impressed. If Vega Squadron, you know, draft a lineup that fully counters OD plus an Omni Knight, um, I'll be pretty impressed by that. But we're already going to have some of the better Diffuser Blade ca carries taken out of the pool. Um, first starting with Juggernaut. Maybe we'll see Faceless Void as another one or something. Um, and then you're going to be even more limited as to what you can do to stop this OD. In your experience, what is the best way to deal with the OD-Omni combo? Because we certainly see it at a crap ton in pubs, so uh, I'm sure you have some experience with it. Well, Drow's out already. Drow is like one of the heroes that you really don't want to see if you pick OD early, um, because that hero just kind of flattens him. Um, high physical damage, so that hero's banned out, which means that Vega looking... It's kind of annoying because like you want to have some kind of hard carry that is going to be able to just beat up OD later on when mm -hmm. the repel isn't such an issue. But if you think like Morphling, he's, he's not the most amazing. But I think you can pretty much run almost any hard carry if you already have Oracle Nyx first too because you've already got pretty flexible um, lanes rather. So you can like put the Nyx, uh, you can shut down whatever hero in particular that you want on the enemy team. You always have a decent save, so... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see them try and draft on a Mortfling again because it's pretty much their favorite by far. Okay. Isn't it... Uh, do you think it's a better problem? Because isn't Morphling have a problem with OD and the whole intelligence deal and pure damage aspect of the hero? Yeah, he does. So it's just a kind of a... <laughs> it just what they feel of... comfortable with. It's yeah. just kind of a, a thing, really. It's just... Morphling is always going to be good at some point, but it's just a question of can you get to that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Because some games it's ten minutes, some games it's from the very beginning. Um, so, 
Some games it's way later on when you have to. And some games you can buy Diffusal on Morphling if you really have to. Like, I played Morphling ages and ages ago. Like when people were playing OD Omni every game, and if you picked Morphling fairly early and you came up against that, you just end up going like Lincoln's Manta Diffusal, and then you mm-hmm. just run around hunting Omni Knights all day. And then eventually, if you did it enough, you'd win. If you didn't do it, then Hody would walk up your high ground, you'd lose. So, <laughs> oh, isn't it silly how how the game becomes somewhat simple when you have a nice combination like Od Omni, or you have a Draw Ranger strat? It's like, all right, you have to do these things, or they go high ground and win. Yeah, it's literally, it's almost reminiscent of like the TI4 kind of thing, where it's like you protect your towers in the first five minutes of the push, and then. If you lose enough towers, then you will lose the game. If you defend the towers and get two kills, you will win the game. And yeah. it's like that kind of thing. But OD Omni is a bit more flexible than that, I'd say. It's like it's got a little bit of room to work with, but once OD starts dying quite a bit and then he falls behind in net worth relative to the enemy heroes, then it doesn't look so good. Um, oh. I like the Void here. Yeah. Uh, so Team Empire, they chose not to ban away the Void, which is the other really common Diffusal Blade hero. And also, um, I think, some, somewhat favored, right? Because of the way that you're able to lock down the the OD and be able to lay into him during that time, hopefully catch the Omni as well. Like it seems pretty favored from from what I've seen anyway. Um, so th- instead they ban away the Doom, which obviously makes sense against the Omni. We've seen that plenty of times picked up as a counter, but uh, leaves that one available for Vegas Squadron. They took a damn long time to decide what to do, um, which obviously says a bit. I'm sure this team is feeling a little bit stumped as to exactly how to deal with this kind of opening, but. Tim, yeah, I'm kind of like, oh, there we go. Okay, so Empire's got the whole thing going on where they will just literally um, try and do as well as possible in the laning stage. Like, if Pudge gets any kind of kills on the off lane, so his off laner gets loads of XP, or his safe lane, so the enemy off laner gets completely screwed over, then Team Empire will have a really easy time of kind of getting to the Hurricane Pike OD plus the level 9 Omni and things like that. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't, if he's like this 0 2 kind of level 4 at like nine minutes i can't really do anything i need to land a hook but the enemy team is all four manning already kind of thing then it's not really going to go too well so what is um what is your preferred matchup against an od um puck used to be good and then people realized that if you max astral then puck is <laughs> not very good against it and now everyone yeah. maxes astral so that's not really a thing mm-hmm. but if you're looking at those heroes now against od uh it's going to be because we know faces Void is going to be safe lane we know yeah. links off lane so it's basically some kind of hero that is just going to sit there and hit people. Um, it's not going to be some hero that necessarily is going to start fights because we've already got all of that. Um, Are you a fan I... of the sniper picks that have been happening lately? That was obviously first introduced um, in scrims versus OD as a mid matchup. Do you like it here? Um, it's pretty good uh, because the Void is going to be the main defusal carrier. Um, Oracle will be able to... There's going to be a point where you're going to have to basically have the Omni sitting mid the entire time because if you get shrapnel, and if you get um, Fortune's Ended from quite far away, then you can actually just die fairly quickly as OD. Mm-hmm. And your early and rotations, it lanes well, yeah. potentially yeah. from Nyx as well. It, it kills really well with yeah. almost anything. And it just it can CS pretty well. And it can f- it will get Astral if OD really wants to do that, but it will also manage to hit him quite a few times more than other heroes would be able to. Yeah. So. And you already I, I said you kind of needed a hero that kind of sat back and just, you know, right-click things, right? You got the Faceless Void with the big Chronosphere. Barring barring that is banned away, though. Do you have another hero in mind? Uh, I'm, I'm never really good at figuring out what people pick. Yeah. Um, but I'd, I'd say, like, it wouldn't be anything that relied too much on magic damage. It, it would have to be something that, like, it almost, like, cause attrition for Radiant, like, the longer they wanted to fight, so, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they want to pick, like, Tinker or something, but, yeah. like, I think it's something that they would be okay getting initiated on, or rather, so that, like, it could still fight if it had to get saved by Oracle. And I'm not sure how many of those heroes fit the criteria against an OD, so. Well, now we have an axe for Team Empire, so they can really put some pressure on that safe lane if they want to. If you're talking about like the Oracle rotating into mid, helping out that mid lane, uh, you're left with just a Faces Void Shattered Demon. Axe can certainly put the pressure on that lane. Um, and it's also aggressive, right? You talked about making sure that you win the laning phase, and it will transition well into that 15-minute marker, trying to lead the way for the OD to get his Hurricane Pike and start dominating the game. 
Um, now it's just left is some sort of aggressive carry. We're going to see Vega Squadron take away the Huskar. Not sure what's left for Team Empire in that role, though. Empire, they could pro any kind of hard carry is almost impossible against Void Nix. It would have to be something that helps them make fight, maybe. I, w I would say PA, but like against Oracle, it's not really amazing. It's okay versus Void. Like the burst damage is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think they just need some hero that does really well in the lane, really, that forces the Nyx to just kind of play back. Because if the, there's a Nyx sitting with like 40 CS at 10 minutes or something, and he gets like level 7 um, really easily without having to be contested too much, then I think it makes Odie's and Omni's life complete hell. So. Yeah. Well, they don't ban away. Um, it, is it possible that it's Nyx Assassin mid? I'm uh, just really surprised by this. Because I don't think Void can do that matchup, right? And then you have this Luna that was banned away uh, by Team Empire. Mm, I like the uh, Luna Ban is pretty good here. I think um, because like I remember watching lots and lots of games where like FDL would play against like um, was it World Witch Doctors or whatever they're called, yep. and like there would be lots and lots of mid voids in lots of games, um, just flying around, running around with Echo Sabers and Vlads and Slardars and things, and just chasing Trotanity. But I don't think it's that kind of game. Weaver. Yeah, so Weaver. Hmm. Mm. Okay. That, that's yeah. That's a hero that has to win its lane pretty hard so it's really going to be about the axe i think this game is the oh it is mid next yeah it's mid next okay yeah so is the axe safe lane here uh and then sinking's the off laner like they could do safe lane od mid sinking i think yeah. that would be best um okay safe lane od mid sinking seems pretty good here because you just wait like, nix has a really hard time against the caustic man so yeah and od will do fine laning like od safe lane is like i guess back when his q and his q was a lot better in the safe lane he was a much better pick versus offlane void because you'd see that a lot of the time like if you were safe lane od and you saw someone pick offlane void against you you'd be like i'm going to hit creeps of five minutes and then there's <laughs> nothing you can do to stop me yeah but g's playing it so they probably just want to guarantee like blink daggers and stuff so they can get fights with their pudge in the omni yeah I mean, you pretty much nailed it with uh, the entire idea of what you do with an OD strategy. They just went full on and making sure that they're going to have a good landing phase, but that transition into the 15, 25 minute marker, they obviously have some very nice aggressive heroes once they get those blink daggers, kind of setting everything up for the OD to carry this game out. Meanwhile, Vega Squadron, they did get themselves a nice physical damage hero as their last pick. It does switch around our lanes a bit. Iceberg is going to be mid laning with the poor man's shield. We're going to have Mag as the off laner here, and FN will take over the carry at top with the Weaver. Um, what, what are the, some of the things, like, we could have run this whole sniper mid situation, etc. Um, what, what does Weaver give you that any other physical damage right click uh, would not give you? It gives you diving potential on the safe lane. It means that any time... Weaver can basically turn any 1v1 matchup into a man fight to the death, basically. <laughs> um, which is... Like, I've played quite a few IXDL games or whatever, like, back in the day when, like, Universe would just pick himself safe lane Weaver, and then he would just buy Tread Tequila and a drum, and he'd just run at people yeah. until the end of time. And then he would either kill the offlaner five times, or he wouldn't. And if he did, he would win, and if he didn't, he would lose. Um, Mason would do that shit did that stuff mm -hmm. as well so it's like i think main thing about safe lane weaver is you try and kill what's in front of you and you make so what's in front of you doesn't want to stay in the lane but if someone can lane against you and get decent farm and cs unless you get some pretty good like fights after the 10 minute mark then the hero's almost defunct i think like i remember having some conversations with people and it's like you can have lots and lots of farm, and you can be do really well. But if you haven't got like lots of objectives and Roche, and you're not actually like hitting a tier three at like thirty minutes, then you're still a weaver, and yeah. weavers, weavery. You know, it's, <laughs> it's just not. It's not a hero that necessarily is going to go high ground for you real early. It's not a hero that is going to be able to out carry everything else. It's uh, yeah. what what item build? Because he could be a diffusal blade weaver. Just because there's a, an Omni at the other team? Or do you say, Void's going to get enough farm out of the off lane? he goes for it, forgets the Blink Dagger for a little while, and we see like the the more um, physical damage heavy Desolator Weaver? Well, if this was um, a patch before the drum nerf, what I would have done is I would have just gone like Treads 
a kilo drum and then a diffusal mm. and then just fought until the end of time with my oracle and relying on the oracle and shadow demon to get me out of tricky situations but he may want to go for a lincoln's but then i then it would be a lot on the void and the nyx to really do well in the lane so that because this game is basically for the first 10 minutes going to be we farm you farm let's see what happens when we run at each other kind of thing yeah. because nyx isn't going to kill od od isn't going to kill nyx even with rotations they're probably not going to kill each other on the safe lane here you've got axe versus void it'd take a lot for void to mess up and die here same for axe and on the top lane that's where the kills might happen so is this going to basically be I'm not sure what Adams is going to go, but either way, he needs to get a lot of farm out of this lane. Another one of those, I'm almost a melee hero situation. Sand King is facing up against a Weaver with weak range. So as you kind of said, with a potential mid lane matchup, you wanted Sand King to be able to have one of those matchups where he could abuse Caustic. Well, this certainly is it. With the Omni backing him up, he can be plenty aggressive. And uh, then our Shadow Demon is actually going to be bottom lane with Mag, where they're trying to make this a farm war. Uh, against the axe, as you said, no one should should be dying here anytime soon. Mm, yeah, it's axe doesn't have boots, so yeah, he just needs to make sure he just doesn't trade to it inefficiently because he's hasn't actually got that much regen. So if he loses all of his HP here and he has to salve up, then wait, hold on, he's, he's... yeah, he may actually be dying here. He's He's got so no many stacks way. of poison on him, and he's got nowhere to run to, and he's dead just like that. Yeah. I'm not sure why. <laughs> All right. And he can't do anything. He's, he just dies there, I think. Oh. Like, SD has enough mana for enough poison as he wants. Like, even if he gets back to the tower, he won't survive because there's a double creep wave under it. So, I think as soon as he starts walking into the SD there, he's just dead. Yeah, I'm not sure why he felt like it was a good time to man fight uh, against uh, that SD. But... Sioma, he's just... Uh, he sees the Omni pick up the DD in front of him, backs off quickly, and then goes, I'm just going to purge that. And then they both walk off 100 mana shorter. So, Mipashka just killing himself, as you do. Yes, yeah, so I'm just going to watch G, really. Mipushka. If G can make this Nyx's life misery, then he'll do pretty well. But if he doesn't, then just one gank from Nyx will make his game pretty difficult. Seems like Iceberg is doing pretty well with this whole Spike Carapace setup to start with. He's burning through most of G's mana early on, uh, so we may not have G be able to spam rotate Astral Imprisonments if he gets a little unlucky, and then we've got the Spike Carapace being able to block back some of that damage from uh, the Imprisonment wave clear that he keeps doing. Aloha Dance, looks like he's dead again. You're <laughs> going to be able to get the bash, of course, so Vega Squadron now oh, two up. Oh, Iceberg is under attack. Iceberg he's has a stun. Got a stun. Though, so nice. Hits the double stun. And Sioma just TP's in saying, hi guys. And he just kind of walks off. Which leads FN a little bit out in the cold. So immediately Empire will try and abuse that, get some damage onto him. But it's a Weaver Ooh. at the end of the day. Just looking at Weaver now. This is the situation where you really don't want to be in. You know you've only got one Tango left. You're half HP. You die to a combo from the enemy team. But you don't have enough gold to get Ring of Health. You feel that if you use the Courier for a Salve or an extra Tango, then it won't be enough in time, so you're going to miss out on two waves. You see the Sand King is about to get level 5 in front of you. Like This Weaver is... He's, no one wants to be in this situation. It, this is spooky. He's, he's basically end. completely reliant on Nyx and Esty kind of saving his lane for him. Yeah. Like Oracle could come up here, but what does he really offer? He's going to give Weaver a few like waves of farm, but is that going to change much? He doesn't even uh, have the ability to heal him, really, without Fate's Edict, so... Iceberg, meanwhile, uh, is about to pick up his level 5, so the rotations... We're not that late into the game just yet. Uh, Aloha Dance, trying to do the best he can to abuse Mag in a faceless void, but he's already died enough. Mag should be pretty happy with the way the lane's gone. And Yeah, I just... I think that Empire's laning is just... Uh, although they are, they are pushing the Weaver, they're also kind of giving Mag quite a lot. And I think... A farm void in this game, if he does go for like the I am the carry now kind of thing, he's he is going to be brutally effective. And Aloha Dance is under attack. And poor Iceberg. Aloha Dance. Just being kited around, will be healed up. King R does have the repel ready to go. They're going to have to pop that poison soon. Sure enough, the repel comes out, and Aloha Dance makes his way back to tier 1, but of course, another bash comes out, and the Shadow Poison is released for the kill. 3-0 now, and those are all axe kills for Vega Squadron. Yeah, Aloha Dance, he's 
He's not having fun. No. I think. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of. You're stuck in a matchup where you. Like, you would normally expect to be fighting Axe versus Void, and you're like, okay, there's an SD here, but it's fine, guys. I'm not going to die. And then you do die. And your team's like, uh, are you okay? They're like, what's happening? Do we need to be there? And like, you're like, oh, no, no, I just messed up. And then it was a fluke. It was a again. fluke. <laughs> it again. Oh, yeah, he, got, he got the bash, guys. It's fine. And then another death and it's like another bash and you're like oh this guy's oh this is so annoying this guy's not even good and like you just start getting really annoyed and then it gets to this point where you, omni's finally like i've had enough of this we can't have you dying enough so he's just kind of sitting down here now i mean the whole Which point means... of this right was to ensure a uh, fast blink dagger for this axe and he's looking more like an off lane axe than a safe lane one although on the other hand you have ghostic who's managed to take the entirety of the double stack that Baker were kind of trying to farm with the weaver and oracle because um he kind of caustic everything, and then Oracle used the Fortune's End and then did enough damage to blow up three of the caustics, which then killed everything else. And G is fine-ish. Uh, no, can't really do much there. Can't imprison because of the Spike Carapace. Now they might just get uh, Maposhka as well. One more second for the stun. If he lands it, it's a kill. If he doesn't, Maposhka gets away. And actually lands a hook. Iceberg, of course, more than healthy enough to survive through that, he'll be okay. Meanwhile, FN had a bit of a man fight against Ghostic, had to pop his ultimate. FNG is on the run. Oh, he really is. King R, hoping to be able to slow him down. He has the heal. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's dead. Bought a little time for some rotations. Jesus. <laughs> he got so many Shadow Poison stacks there. Yeah, SD with an Arcane Rune is actually like, it's pretty silly. Yeah. I like Iceberg though, he's just. He knows that he doesn't actually need to do that much if Void gets a lot of fun, so... Mm -hmm. He's also maxing character, so he's just going to be doing this for the rest of the time. Well, if he gets hooked in, he dies, but I don't think he gets hooked in. Oh, in fact, it could be Maposhka who dies. Sioma! Oh, barely in range, but he gets it off. The Purifying Flames finishes off the Pudge. Yeah, I'm never really good at working out if someone's going to die or not in a teamfight with an Oracle in it, because they, <laughs> they seem fine, and then uh -huh. two seconds later, they're just gone. So I always yeah, I need to be careful about calling that, because I'm usually wrong. Meanwhile, in top lane, you got FN. He's just got his Aquila. He did decide to go for the finish the Aquila and get Tangos instead of going for Ring of Health. So he's probably going to be doing the more kind of fighting Weaver than I'm going to sit up here and pressure the tower Weaver. Iceberg is maybe trying to get a kill here, but they don't have detection, so... Actually, no, no, no Sandstorm, so... <laughs> Nicely... Oh, wait, never mind. He may still be able to hit the stun, in fact he will, so it looks like Ghost Stick is still gonna go down. Heal comes out from Omni, the right clicks, they just need full right click power out, and they've got him. The stun goes off, Iceberg will die in return, FN actually still taking a lot of damage thanks to the Caustic Finale popping on him. Will be forced back and won't be able to chase the Omni out. Yeah, Iceberg was being very cute there, he was like, I'm gonna carapace him out of my ulti. Um, mm -hmm. So he pre-carapaces to get the max carapace stun, because he is four, uh, he's zero, oh, he's one, one, four, so... That's usually the best way to land his stun, but uh, Sanking didn't actually blow anything up at the time, so it didn't really work out, so he ended up dying for it. But Weaver kind of profits from that, so that's okay. He does have his Ring of Health now, so he should be pretty hard to zone out of this lane, even if Sanking comes back, because this Sanking, he hit, he's hit peak strength for laning phase right now. So if he can't do anything now, then Weaver's going to farm. Yeah. Uh-oh. Iceberg. Actually missing a hook on mid. Slowing him down a little bit, but they don't have the counter vision, so again he gets away. They had the Oracle behind anyway, so it didn't really matter. Meanwhile, Vega Squadron with heroes showing mids, they'll gladly push in this bottom lane. Get some damage on the tier 1 tower. Another stun, another missed hook. G almost goes down, has to buy himself time with the imprisonment. Vega Squadron will be chased away, but again, more heroes rotating into the mid lane just to ensure the OD is safe and is buying so much time. For Vega, especially Mag on this void to get farm. Yeah, I really like the way that they managed to convert this Nyx into just kind of. He's just. All he has to do is run at lanes, and then he's kind of forcing massive reactions. Oh, and God! It's just not going very well, is it? This whole um, <laughs> pudge thing. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the nice way to, to put it, Rhyme. I was going to call it a clown fest, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's not going as bad at all. Like, he is getting XP, but he is kind of. Actually, almost every single extra point of XP past like the four, level four or ten minutes, you know the thing that I said. Mm -hmm. Every single bit of that XP past that is actually OD's XP because he's sitting at barely level seven. So, 
Well, this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's not totally Pudge's fault, right? Like, that, that yeah, one was just like, oh, he shouldn't position himself in front of a hook like that. Like, come on. But this is just a full Team Empire completely messing up their mid lane. Uh, but yeah. maybe they haven't dealt with this uh, this Nyx assassin spike carapace max out first. I mean, it's it's definitely a different strat. I can't say that I've seen it before, but it seems to be working out really well. I think going for something not many people do nowadays. He's maxing Gemini attack, so he's actually just kind of playing quite passive. Normally, um, you'd see safe lane weavers try and max W, of course, and then just go max swarm, and then you just run at everything you see. But uh, he doesn't need to do that quite yet. Uh, Sioma has fallen over. Yeah, he's he's mega dead. They went for a dive onto the axe, turned against them as mass TPs, Team Empire. I mean, it, it makes sense, especially since you've got your true carry in the mid lane. But uh, people are doing a lot, a lot of this these days. Playing hard around their mid lane as uh, radiant side. Oh, oh. Goes <laughs> All right, all right. Maybe one day. <sighs> Actually, you got the arrow, so it's not all bad. Oh, fight going on. King R has encountered FNG as he's farming a stack. King R does not approve of the stack being farmed. FNG disregards. <laughs> FNG's got the five stacked. Oh, yeah. one step ahead Are of the bro strike. No he gets the Are whole entire thing. And they'll get King R. It's just the extra little bit. The cherry on top. Three to seven now. And uh, Vega Squadron seem to be dismantling Empire even earlier than they did in game number one. Yeah, it's like their main thing, which is the OD doing well in lane, and then the Omni being able to move around him hasn't really materialized yet. So I don't think it's 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 not too late for them to kind of rally because actually Axe is going Vanguard. So like they are going to try and stall this out a little bit longer. Yeah. Empire don't want to fight right now. They don't they're, have to. They're about to get Dagger on SK though. They got the Ancient stack to speed up the Blink Dagger once he has the Vanguard a bit. It all comes down to these team fights once they have the blink on SK. How's that first one going to go? Well, they're going to start off with an early pick, potentially, on the Weaver. If they can get in place for the call, Aloha Dance not there in time. And the Nyx Assassin caused some problems, pops the Illusion Rune just at the right time. Maposhka nails an Illusion with his hook and is now going to be leaving Aloha Dance out to dry. Nothing they can do much to save him. G thinks about it. imprisonment, does throw it out now. King R's coming in from the right-hand side, but has to heal himself, almost kills FN in the process. Not quite enough, and gets a full-out heal on FN. They'll chase down the supports. One is Omni, make it two for Maposhka. Not quite hitting him with the poison. In fact, okay, that wasn't the time. Quite the time to epicenter there. Gets caught out. Spike Carapace turns that stun off. Ghost Dick trying to dodge the stun. Will manage to do it there. Burrow Strike. That the axe comes in from behind. Does manage to get the call out on one. FN already dodged up. Doesn't have his ult to work on for another 20 seconds. Vega Squadron starts slowly retreating back. But maybe Iceberg will find another opening. Maposhka is certainly low enough. They are going to go for this one. The counter ward's up. Oh, Imprisonment saves, but Iceberg hasn't used the sun just yet. May not have the mana for it. Turns around, hits the heal. Oh, Maposhka still alive. Turns around, eats up Mag. Mag doesn't have a time walk for another second. They should be able to pop him. Not quite. Still not having enough burst damage. Aloha Dance going to try and catch him up. Looks like they got the Imprisonment. A call and a disruption and a nice use of the Spike Carapace once again. And they actually fully save unless Iceberg's going to go down. Oracle tries to get off the heel. Three-man stun from Iceberg and they get it just ahead of the Cooling Blade. Baiting himself Ooh. out again and again. Uses the Spike Carapace chrono, to stall off Aloha Ooh. Dance. And Mag's now coming in with a big Chrono. King R's going to be target of one. While well, the Chrono Sphere catches the other. Aloha Dance. Target number one. He'll go down. Stun goes out. Hits on a G. Maposhka comes in. Eats him up. Three-man bro strike. That's a good setup. Maybe that can turn up the whole entire fight, but they all look too healthy, so it's back over to Nyx Assassin, will eventually die to G. Thought he was going to be able to put the pressure on OD, but things turned around quite sharply with the Omni joining the fight. Looks like the Weaver's still looking for a pick off somewhere. Won't be able to find anybody, though. Alright, is it over? I uh, think have so. They stopped? <laughs> have they stopped hitting each other? Alright, so Weaver's got Dragonlance, so he's not really... Yeah, he's just going to go for I am the Damage Man kind of thing. He's building, like, intermediate items, so... He, they're just trying to gradually just accrue strength um, per minute rather than like go for the big items that you get so it's not going to be Weaver going to go I need to get my Lincoln Skies and we're going to fight until that point so you've got Mag he's just he's kind of okay with how that went he hasn't really got many kills but he's got a lot of assists um, he's kind of taking over the enemy jungle right now so Empire they kind of they don't have much map control even though they've got relatively good vision so 
They're still always afraid of the iceberg running around. Which means yeah. you won't see G without like two heroes near him. You won't see anyone really showing on the map other than that. Which means they're just going to get out farmed. Yeah. Efficient use of the enemy jungle. Top lanes being controlled so they have their own jungle to take care of. It pretty much comes down to Empire just making the most efficient use of Ancients as possible. But that's already been a bit of a struggle for them. Ghost Dick is going to be hit by the stun. Iceberg managed to spike Carapace. Maposhka's hook and will get himself away or not. Ghost Dick actually managed to nail the stun. FN's here to help out. Maposhka's already low. Iceberg is the target. Pops another spike hair brace, turns around for the stun, hits it on Maposhka. Maposhka may be going down here as the rest of the team's going to come in from behind. Iceberg is still the target for Empire, and they'll get that kill eventually. With the extra movement speed, they might be able to catch more, too. Shatter Demon gets caught in the imprisonment. Vega looking for an opportunity to turn, but it's just not going to be there. Another cooling blade and more movement speed as they catch yet another support. See on this layer. He pops his ult, but there's no way out of this one. Can't TP away. The stun will stop him, so he just takes the damage and we'll die to the inevitable. Um, hold on. I'm just looking at something. Do you see what's on the courier for Radiant right now? Uh-huh. Yeah. Is that a thing? What, what, um, I don't know. <laughs> Could be a thing. I mean, well, why would he get it? So he can cast Astra from a longer range, so he can save people from Chrono? So he can save his Omni from Chrono? Maybe. I mean, he's, maybe, uh, he's not really the main damage output. The main damage output right now is basically people just getting stunned into Axe Core and then just getting core sticks and spun to death. Yeah. And I think Empire just... They have a lot of tanky heroes, and right now Vega just don't have much damage, which is why these fights, although they look good initially for Vega, aren't going so well. Because Nyx, honestly, right now, what does he provide? If, if he doesn't carapace, like a lot of spells, he doesn't do very much. And Weaver... Unfortunately, remains a weaver for the time being. Um, and Void, once, until he gets defusal, he's not really much apart from a chrono. So, Vega just need to just not take fights right now. But Empire have other ideas. Epicenter straight into Mag, catching him out. Unable to time walk away in time, and that will be slowing down that defusal blade. As you said, kind of just a chronosphere for now until he gets that upgrade in items. And uh, nice pick off like that will speed things along quite a bit. Now they have the double blinks as well. Ghost took a little bit of a panic moment where he ulted and then he blinked in and he was like, yeah. oh crap, I'm missing three mana, I better pop this five stick. And then it's like, Ooh. he didn't he didn't jump away in that time, everything is fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I saw that too, I was just like, ah, all right. <laughs> jump in, oh. catching FN, they have the hook available, but Siamma's Slayer's already there with the disables and Iceberg was sneaking in from behind, so this actually fight is going to turn against them, Maposhka. Looking to be able to catch him, but unfortunately Iceberg doesn't actually have the damage to kill Maposhka, and it's now going to be caught. Aloha Dance into the heal, quick calling blade to make things a bomb. See on the Slayer, also going to be caught. He's trying to TP away somewhere inside the trees. Vega Squadron. Uh, it seems like every single time they try and get a little aggressive now, they're just being... Um I mean, they're just losing hero after hero, especially with a calling blade movement speed. It seems like both that fight as well as the fight up at that higher river, it wasn't necessary for them to take. They definitely could yeah. have cut their losses on a support at some point. Yeah, they just feel like they can go. I think it's like, oh, oh, oh dear. It's like that laning phase fallacy, right? It's like, yeah, you, it's you, like laning phase went yeah. well, you know? Yeah, it's like, I think it happens a lot with Oracle as well, because when you take fights with Oracle in the very early game, like Oracle, like you, you kill whatever you see, because Oracle is like the be-all and end-all of early game damage. Mm. But um, then you get the point where the enemy team will have like 1.1k HP plus, and if they don't die in a Nyx stun plus um, the Oracle combo, then they're not really dying, because anything more than that is quite a large time investment. G. Opening initiation, they are going to have the epicenter rebuttal though, Ghost It comes out, will nail FNG with a burrow strike, that'll pop the Shatter Demon and a hook on the Iceberg, brings them right back into the hands of Empire. Again, one pick turns to two, Empire capitalizing on the openings, Vega Squadron is leaving, they'll get the tier 1 tower on top of that. Meanwhile, Aloha Dance actually running into Sioma the Slayer, FN is here, but what's a Weaver going to do to an axe? Instead, it's just going to be Sioma the Slayer nailed down once again by the Culling Blade. FN goes for the TPO, oh god, how is this turning so badly? They're going to be able to get the call, holding FN in place, and they burst him down with the heal of the Omni. One turns to two... Two turns to four, 16 to 10 now. Vega Squadron had pretty much given up all reminiscences of early laning phase advantage. This is now Empire running the show.
Yeah, it's, it's just kind of falling into that situation where it takes two seconds for Empire to kill any member of Dyer, and it takes approximately ten seconds with lots of heroes hitting someone on Empire for anyone from Vega to kill an Empire player. So it's like, it means that either Vega need to avoid fights, and to do so, to do that they need to have good map control, or they need to be extremely coordinated in how they take fights. And the way things are currently, I don't see either of those things happening very much. So, they are waiting for the defusal on Mag, they are getting the defusal soon on Weaver, 700 gold-ish, so that's kind of soon. But, it's just, is the OD going to stop hitting the buildings? He's gonna have Hurricane Pike in 600, so one more tower and then they're looking towards that. The Axe has a Blink and Blade mail now, so he's in danger, like, solo killing some heroes, provided he's got a little bit of luck. I, I just I think that it's pretty hard. I feel like in some ways there was this disjointed thought. I think like Mag was definitely on the side of split pushing and farm up, let's get Diffusal Blades, etc. And some of the rest of the team, like FN for example, who's about to get popped by Aloha Dance and King R's combination, uh, were positioning themselves for fights, but you can't take those sort of fights, not against Empire, unless you have Void with you leading things off with the Chronosphere. You get the numbers advantage because you killed one core and then go from there. And that's the only time you could fight. Only when you lead with that, that Chronosphere, it feels like. But, like, Mag's been playing the farming game and I can't blame him for it either. That's very clearly one of the advantages that Vega Squadron have here is just going for those mid to late game defusal blades and trying to out carry with the physical damage. Yeah, because the longer a fight goes on, uh, past like the 30 minute mark or so, when Nyx gets like higher points of mana burn, when he gets his Ags, when Void, like, he's able to function outside of the Chronosphere, and when Weaver can survive a little bit more, then they can take extended fights and maybe they can kind of live through the initial burst damage that Radiant have, but until that point, fights are extremely risky. Well, they're finally going to get an opening of Chronosphere onto the OD, and they don't actually have uh, anything to stop this just yet. Burrow Strike and Epicenter combination coming in. They managed to drop the OD ultimate before all of that, but Mag still has enough mana to be able to time walk away, so it looks like he should be okay on the backside. Shadow Demon's already gone. Loha Dance and Maposhka managed to get that one kill, but Vega Squadron, uh, they're thinking about pursuing, but they don't really have any catch, so it's kind of pointless. They got a kill on the OD. Call it quits there, friends. Trust me. We have already seen how you trying to go for more has turned against you so many times. Vega Squadron just trade one for one and continue to try and uh -oh. farm up. Aloha Dance, he's not going to quit though. He managed to get the call into Iceberg, follow up with the Burrow Strike, and again, another Culling Blade kill or a Omni Knight heal kill. Either way is going to lead to a tier one tower. I know this is very like hindsight is twenty twenty, but I think Ghost panicked really hard there. I think he blinked in um, like before the OD died, before the OD ult went off, and then he took like one, like a second or two to like he stunned the wrong way, so he only got one instead of the three. Um, and I think he could have saved OD there and like made sure that at least the void died and maybe one other, but he just kind of panicked when he blinked in, so that wasn't too ideal. But then they just get the follow up kill on the Nyx really, and the Nyx has is very poor. I'll say it plainly. Yeah. He doesn't have Ags, he's nowhere near Ags, and they're not really in a position to get any towers, so he gets closer, so either they allocate him some farm, or they get some good fights. What and do you think about the, uh... now, so. oh, We are going to have a fight first, Shadow Demon FNG quickly picked off the hook, and now they're going to find more. Ghost Dick stuns up the faces void, Maposhka was trying to position himself for a hook. Now they actually count FN! Looks like they have vision up there, they will be able to take out the Weaver and now look for whatever else they can catch. It's going to start with Iceberg. Oracle forced to pop that ultimate right away. Body blocking as best he can. The imprisonment start things off. And it should be a pretty easy kill. Iceberg surrounded by heroes. And again, Empire will take one kill to two to three. And then take an objective off of it. Tier two is going to be surrounded by Empire heroes. Yeah, so they're just kind of running at buildings and killing whatever's in front of them. And then killing the buildings and Vega aren't really presenting any disincentive for them to do so, so... They're, they're not hitting any towers on the other side of the map. It's risky for them to do so anyway, because Pudge being missing is scary, Axe being missing is scary, Sanking being missing is scary, because if any one of them are missing and they catch you when you're trying to push, then the other ones can just TP in and then you're certainly dead. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Weaver and you do incredibly good jukes or something, but that's unlikely. So it's basically, can Vega farm enough in the small areas they have available to dissuade Empire from doing their push? Right. And they're going to get this roast so that basically Empire can spend quite a few minutes not necessarily farming for themselves and it will still be worth it if they pressure building at this time. Which makes playing this Vega very difficult. 
Aegis will go into the hands of Empire G. We'll pick that one up alongside his Hurricane Pike. And Vega Squadron still going to try and fight this one out. Oh, Icebreak actually got snatched up by the hook. And he managed to get a beautiful Burrow Strike almost into the call. Loha Dance not quite there in time to take full advantage of that initiation. But it's still Vega Squadron very clearly losing in the fight unless... Maybe with this Chronosphere set up onto three, but they don't really have the heroes to take advantage of it. Now, oh god, it just turned so badly against them. GG is the call from Vega Squatch, and that was pretty much their last stand. They know they kind of screwed up from a great laning phase start into a terrible, terrible transition outside of that. Give up their full advantage, and Team Empire take a very easy game number two. Yeah, this game was odd, I think. Yeah, I, I think was going to say had, weird, yeah. yeah. Vega had an idea of what I wanted to do, but they just kind of got overwhelmed by the idea of, we have a Nyx, we're going to take a fight, and then there's just Empire hit kind of critical mass when they had the Omni heal, like uh, when he got level 7, and they had not multiple stuns that they could really just burst anyone with. So fighting got really hard for Vega, and then they just decided to kept, keep doing it. So rather than trying to capitalize on the map control they could have gained um, in the early laning stage, they kind of just let Empire walk into them and then take favorable fights. So I think maybe it's just an execution thing for Vega, really. All right, well, that cut things uh, pretty quick here. Our European qualifier, or sorry, CIS qualifier will continue here as we have game number three coming up. This is going to be... The, uh, this lower bracket matches, by the way, so this next game number three determines who's going to be knocked out of the Dota Pay qualifier as they have been both already knocked down by Virtus Pro and Na'Vi, respectively. So, we'll be back with game number three after a short break.